Hello and welcome back to DK's lab. Today we're going to talk uh, about Proxmox and we're going to install Proxmox and uh, uh, create some VMs on it. So to install Proxmox, uh, we'll go on the main website for Proxmox, then go on downloads and select uh, the Proxmox V. As of this recording, we are on a version 831. So once you download, you're going to write this image on a bootable drive, either USB or CD-ROM. Uh, for my case, I'm going to be using Mentoy and I'm using this application because it allows me to keep on adding new images on the USB drive without formatting it every time I want to install. Um, to access my desktop uh, remotely, I'm going to be using uh, PyKVM. We did install a few some time back. I will uh, link the video on the description of this video. And uh, as you can see, I have a few images on this USB drive. And that's the power of Ventoy, and that's why I'm using it uh, so that I can I don't need to keep on formatting the USB drive every time I want to do an installation. And we're going to pick uh, Proxmox 831. So as always, you are supposed to pick a boot in normal mode. But if you experience uh, some issues while installing, then you need to pick the second option. Uh, for this case, I tried boot in normal mode and uh, it failed. So I'm going to try to boot on uh, grab two mode and hopefully this will fix the issues I am having while installing. So let's select R and wait. Then we're going to install the first option that is a uh, graphical option. It seems to fail again so I'm going to see what's happening here very um, so for some reason I was unable to install 8.3 on my desktop it is a very old desktop it's Optiplex uh, Dell Optiplex 780 so I think it might be it might be due to age but let's see, so I've downgraded to 8.0.1 and this one seems to let me install, so let's see what we got. So I'm installing it on that uh, drive. So let's click on next. Let me change this time to central time. So you're going to select your country, time zone, your keyboard, then we move next. And then we're going to set our password here. So let me do my password. Did I get right? And email I do admin rd and then we click next. Oh, uh, why not letting me select? Then my fully qualified. Uh, Host name, I'm going to put pve.dkslab.com. The IP address, I'm going to use dot four, and I'm going to leave the rest as is. So please configure this one 
uh, your gateway and DNS according to your network settings. And also my IP was okay. Numlock is not working, but there we go. I got that for. Next, these are summary of the choices we have made during the installation. That's our file system. Uh, that's the drive, time zone, the IP addresses. Confirm they're correct. Then click on uh, install, and this should take us a few minutes and we should be done so let's wait so we are 99 let's see so the installation is completed and here is my machine doing a reboot So it's supposed to boot it's supposed to boot on uh, Proxmox V and that way we can access it on the browser. So um, the reboot is done and it's ready for us to go and uh, login or access it through the browser this is the ip and the port is 8006 so let me refresh this page so we're going to advance and accept and here we go so the username is root and the password is the one we set during the installation i hope i can remember mine And there we go so as you can see the message here says we don't have a valid subscription for this server so we are going to set uh, we're going to disable the subscri the paid subscription um, updates and take the free ones put the repository we can use the interface instead of going to shell and doing it on the command so if you go to updates and go to repositories you're going to see we have uh, two source list here but they are all enterprise and since we don't have a paid uh, subscription but if you're using this for like uh, your company uh, where you're making some money I would advise you to go and uh, buy the subscription so that you can give the you can give back to Proxmox and uh, they can keep the project going on but if you're using it for your home, just go ahead and remove uh, the paid ones and remain with the. Uh, so we're going to and remain with the uh, community one. So we're going to disable that one and uh, this one, and then we're going to add a new one, which is uh, no subscription. And we're going to add, and that one should be the download.proximox.com Debian the PVE, and it's already enabled. That's all how you do to remove uh, the enterprise ones and put the new uh, the community one. So to check for updates, you just click on updates, and this should uh, start loading checking for updates remember i installed uh, the 8.03 i'm not sure whether i need to upgrade to the latest one but i will try later and see if uh, it works with this uh, machine but if not i will use this one but for these for the demo purposes for this one we're going to use this one um so let's move on on how to create a uh, VM so you can create a virtual machine or you can create a container so a virtual machine you just click on create VM and give it a name but before that we need to load uh, some images so to load the images we need to click on these uh, 
arrow on the PV and then we're going to go to local and we're going to ISO images and we are going to upload the images we want so I've selected um, one of the images that is the Ubuntu 24.04 server and I'm also going to upload Debian So the upload process is simple, you're, you're just going to click on upload up here, then select the file, then it will pick from whichever location you have it stored, then you just click on upload and that should just kick in the process. So once this is done, I'm going to upload the Debian and I will show you how to create uh, the VM. And this should be done. Yeah, it is complete as you can see. So finish the filing bot successfully, task okay. So now again, we're going to upload and we're going to select our email. So I've selected my Debian and now I'm going to upload. So with our images uploaded now we can create a VM and uh, I'm going to create um, my VMs on the range of uh, 500 so I was trying to be creative on the names but I was unable to think so I'm going to use uh, the periodic table to name my virtual machines and I'm going to start using this line. It seems to have uh, some good names. And my first one is going to be Helium. And back to our Proxmox. And that's the name we're going to give this guy. Go next. And uh, this is where our image is. I'm going to use local. And for this machine, I'm going to use uh, Ubuntu and I'm going to leave the other options as is then system I'm going to leave as they are but I'm going to check uh, Kumu agent the next um, the size of our disk um, this installation I'm going to use is it uh, as our DNS so I'm going to use the minimum 20 GB for installation. Then now uh, next, yeah, I'm gonna leave the rest as it is, and then memory. I'm going to use uh, 1024, and if I check advanced, I can uh, select ballooning and have a maximum. So this is a minimum, and. Uh, the maximum 3072 which is 1024 times 3 1024 that's the minimum the next network I'm going to use that one as is and I'm gonna leave the rest the way they instead confirm and finish and that's how we are going to create all our VMs selecting the operating system that we want to then after it is done setting up then we can start that uh, virtual machine and do the installation so the VM is done as you can see if you click on it uh, and go to add where you can see uh, the specifications we gave for this virtual machine this was the RAM we gave it a min uh, to have a minimum of 1 GB then grow it up to 3 GB and we selected the 
image to be the Ubuntu 2.4 then on the R disk we selected a 20 GB and it's picking it from the 500 disk then uh, if we go to the options this is where you set uh, if you want this uh, virtual machine to be starting every time the Proxmox uh, starts up or boot and one more thing uh, I want to show you is how to configure network so that uh, this machine can be allowed to uh, to allocate VLANs to our virtual machines on the PV and then share so that we can access the terminal and in there we can uh, configure our network uh, to be able to pass uh, VLANs so that every virtual machine can be connected to the VLAN you want it to be on so here we go so we're going to use nano and we're going to edit it at network and interfaces and enter and this is our our settings looks like and so here we're going to add uh, a few more lines under this one and the line we're going to add is a uh, bridge VLAN dash aware yes and the other line we're going to add is bridge dash VIDs and this should be two to fourteen ninety four. So let's save this one and to save you just do control X and say yes and if we do service networking this should be networking restart that should um, restart our network manager and boot it up with the new configuration let's wait for this to complete so when the restart was complete without any errors that means our configuration is correct so with this set we are going to in the next video we will uh, configure the virtual machines to use the VLANs we want them to be on and test that and that should be should be it for this video so thank you for watching hope this was helpful don't forget to like share and subscribe thank you so much see you on the next one bye bye